Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thriving Adoptees podcast. So today I'm delighted to be joined on the show by Laurie, Laurie Sherman. Graf, nice to see you, Laurie, and uh, thanks for coming on the show. Nice to see you too, Simon, and thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure. Very welcome. You're very welcome. So, listeners, uh, Laurie is uh, an adoptive mum. Her, her son's 24, and she is also the executive of the Heart Gallery in New York City. Um, so uh, I'm here about 10 miles from Old York in the north of England. Uh, we just call it York. We don't call it Old York. And I'm still trying to get, I, 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 I think that there's some humour there between New York and Old York and original York and it's just York. But <laughs> it, it never, <laughs> she's kind of laughing. Um, I, I, I need, to, I need some, to do some fine tuning of that. So... Um, <laughs> So, Laurie, what what your your son's 20, 20 your son's twenty four, and obviously you're mm-hmm. involved in this uh, professionally. Mm-hmm. What comes to your mind when you hear this phrase "thriving uh, adoptees"? The name of the show. Um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, it's just that thriving. There is a challenge, I think. To well, we all have challenges as human beings, but I think especially when you add the adoption into it, you know, it's another element because it does incur a loss. It also incurs a great gain because you're gaining the love of a, of a parent or parents. But uh, yeah, thriving, it, it just, it touches both sides. So it's inspiring to me to hear that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I spent a lot of time figuring out what to call it and uh, mm-hmm. and then you know what it was about and funny enough I think on the uh, on the title that I wrote a year or so ago we're coming up to a year you know, it, inspiration and empowerment for adoptive parents adoptees and adopted parents or mm-hmm. something like that and that kind of uh, I should my, know my own strap line right um, but uh, it, 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 it is it is it, it is it is about inspiring and empowerment and I'm particularly keen on the empowerment part of that mm-hmm. and for me that's all about sharing sharing learnings so that we can kind of progress our own on our we're all on our learning curve um, and what however uh, you know however however young or old we are whatever whatever age we're at we're on that learning curve and what I'm trying to do with the podcast is help people along their own individual learning curve. So mm-hmm. what, what, when you say, uh, did you say touch, touch both sides? What, what did you mean by that? Well, as it's interesting because when I came to this um, years ago, when I adopted my son, it was, it was simply that I wanted a child in my life and it was just a natural occurrence that for, for uh, my husband, and I to just say, yes, you know, hey, it's not happening for us right now. And that's OK. I don't want to go the, the surrogate you, route of, a, you know, all the shots and all of that. Let's just adopt. It was it was not a thought process like, oh, my God, should we do this? It was just natural. So obviously, as um, an adoptive parent, this touches me. And that's what brought me into um, founding Heart Gallery NYC in New York City, which now works also statewide. Um, you know, I think what I've learned on this journey is I, I run into so many people that will say, oh, well, your son is so lucky. And I'll be like, no, I'm lucky. I mean, it's a two way street. It's a beautiful thing. Adoption. Um, it's all about love. And what's better than that? Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't um, know if it actually answered your question. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> okay. it, it's, it, it's where the conversation goes, isn't it? Um, Mm-hmm. I, I I thought um, I'll just draw you back to you say it was an it was a na- it was a natural for you um, mm-hmm. and one one of the things that uh, I like coming into the adoption world uh, you know professionally like I don't mm-hmm. that that was natural for me on the back of a conversation um, and similarly it was a kind of a no brainer so. I think you know, one of the things that I sometimes do, well, I do a lot, and, I, and it, it wakes me up in the middle of the night. I'm, no, I'm, I, I'm really good at overthinking um, and, and not 
so good at relying on instinct and natural stuff to get to get me through so I kind of like overthink stuff and I over plan stuff and I, I see that a lot in I see that a lot in 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 everybody and yeah. I I, yeah. I, I, I talked to so many adoptive parents and you know I like do webinars um, with with partner organizations mm-hmm. I see them a, a overthinking a lot into the future but that seems to come I, I guess parental concern is parental concern whether it's your biological child or your adopted child but because of the challenges that you know that you've um, uh, that you've mentioned mm-hmm. I think adopted parents sometimes think further and harder uh, ahead and 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 like we're trying to I, I think as humans we're trying to se- second guess too many things too many you know too many moves of the chessboard ahead yeah that's that's so true and I think we overthink not only in in the adoptive sense of what we're talking about but everything in life we, we if we could just go with our gut instincts you know and and not overthink but I mean I think if anything, what I what I like to say is that, you know, people go, oh, adoptive child, biological child. I mean, it's 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 the same. I couldn't love my child any more than if I had birthed him myself, you know. Um, um, and I always like to go back to I, I think I once mentioned to you when we spoke that other time that, you know, people go, oh, I found my soulmate, you know, I found my twin flame, I found the person in my life who I love more than anyone, um, in a partner sense, and they don't really and then that that person is not biologically connected to you. But nobody's overthinking that, you know, but somehow when adoption comes into play, people will go, well, it's it's not your real child. Well, what does that mean? Your real child? You know, you're still loving them, whether they came out of your body or not. Yeah. Um, And I think that's what I, I just people need to stop overthinking that and just go with the love. You know, if you have a puppy and people love their dogs and they're not biologically created to their dogs. I see your Uh, doggy cushion in the back. Yeah. Um, Yeah. uh, My wife, uh, my wife didn't think there were enough cushions in my life. So she moved moved some of the cushions from the kitchen into my office here. And somebody this morning actually didn't realize there were cushions and and thought they were, said, oh, those dogs are really, those, those dogs are really really calm and quiet and not moving not, and then he realized that they were cushions um so yeah um i guess it's the it's the minority thing isn't it you know the fact that it is it, it is in the uh, in the minority and people against you know there's a minority of adopted kids versus um right bio kids yeah. And, and, and people in the minority, you know, like we, I think we, we, we all as, as, as people have a hard, hard time sometimes with people that are different to us and, 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 Absolutely. and, we're, and we're not in the sheep. And, 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 and um, I was thinking about this morning, uh, I, when I, I went to the, sorry, I went to the swimming pool and it was absolutely round. So I, I didn't actually go for a swim, mm-hmm. but there was a lady out there. Mm -hmm. Um, outside and she was she worked for the council here and um she was she was a a fostering she she was uh she she worked for the fostering part of the council Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and i was saying oh i've got this uh, podcast you know do you you think you know do you you think you'd be able to tell the people in your network about it and she said well we're (laughs) She said, we're fostering, not adoption. I went, oh, okay, right. She's one of those. Okay. Oh, well, would you be able to tell your colleague about it? And that, oh, well, yeah, I think so. And and then I and I found myself getting very caught up with the bureaucracy, very get getting slightly, yeah, caught up in the bureaucracy. And uh, and 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 I don't really like it. And I'm and I'm just mm-hmm. thinking. And I said, I, I said it's really strange in the UK, there's not much appetite for 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 this for the you know we've got far more listeners from the states far more guests from the states right uh and it's like that that, then then you're not as concerned by the bureaucracy and 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 this kind of for me this links into people 
following the norm, right? So that you know we're we're all conditioned to a greater later a greater a, a greater or lesser extent. And when some people go go when some people go down a different path, whether that's adoption or you know setting up their own business, you know most people work for somebody else. Then the masses kind of think think there's something slightly odd with us, you know, yeah. because we don't conform to the norm. And I'm uh, and uh, yeah, it's another part of human human thing. And and that's and, and and I think that kind of that's the the the, the pleasant end of this of the stigma stick, isn't it? it, it it's different, and yeah, and then and yeah. then something becomes worse. And I see I'm, worse than that and and the, the stigma comes there's a stigma as goes well. and i whenever i see this i see a lot of adult adoptees getting very upset about what people think of it, about them and mm-hmm. and I, I i say this quite a lot because i don't think i don't think it's something that can be said too much like uh, other people's opinions of us is none of our business you know if if we're waiting for the world to change their opinion of us, and by the us, I mean adoptees or adoptive parents, people who are, you know, counter to the norm. If we're waiting for them to change their opinion, opinions of us, then we're going to be waiting a long time and we're going to be really disempowered. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's, but that's, I think it's just part of human nature. I mean, that's why social media is so important today and so prevalent. It's, it's because, I guess it's in our DNA, unfortunately, unless we look above it, you know, to uh, to care about what others think. And it's unfortunate because um, it doesn't really matter. What matters is what makes you happy. What matters is within your family unit. Um, in the circling back to, you know, what what I have done with the Heart Gallery, we're working with youth in foster care. And that adds an additional challenge because uh, they're generally coming from families that have, for whatever reason, they've been taking away their parents' custodial rights have been relinquished because either it's abuse or, you know, a drug issue, or they just can't take it, care of their kids properly. So those kids are coming with additional baggage, speaking again of what the world thinks of them, because they've got that, that you know, that negative background to deal with. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's so much even it's like all, you know, they they so desperately need the love and and support of families. Yeah. I I hear this phrase quite uh, talked about quite a lot that love isn't enough. And I was and I was I I have a little chuckle to myself and I say, well. Isn't it the most. It it is the best place to start, right, you know. (laughs) You know, that's interesting. It's sort of like, and then back to, you know, my son is not adopted out of foster care. He was a domestic adoption. I didn't even know that you could adopt children out of foster care when I adopted him. I learned about the Heart Gallery Project, which was started in New Mexico back in 2001 through a a newspaper article I was reading. But when you said that about love, it just kind of brought me to, I think, self-love is really important and thinking again of these youth in foster care they weren't taught to self-love you know and so they're starting off with that problem but I think maybe I'm getting way off topic here but perhaps if we could all do a little bit more self-love that would help with loving other people too you know I, I know with youth in foster care they're they're coming with a lot of issues that they've didn't you know, they didn't, it was just brought into their lives. They didn't ask for those issues and they have to get past that. And oftentimes uh, that makes adoption difficult for them. So I don't think this is off topic at all. I mean, uh, understanding, right. My fascination is understanding what that self is, right. Mm -hmm. We, we use the word self all the time mm-hmm. and 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 we also talk about uh, adoptees struggling with the word you know struggling with their identity mm-hmm. right and and uh, self-love probably too because they're inside there's a thought of why was I given up 
right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so we go from why was I, um, uh, why was I given up uh, to what's, what's wrong with me? Mm. And, mm. And, and then that kind of, so the, so we, we go to an image, we, we go to a self image or a self definition or a sense of identity that is somehow flawed or um you know and and then we read this <laughs> we read this book called the primal wound and we think well I, i'm not only flawed but i'm wounded and and mm -hmm. and and i'm very disempowered because something's wrong with me and i'm i'm obviously i'm, I'm talking not well not obviously but i am talking about uh, like a, a personal experience of, mm -hmm. of that of that's how i have felt at certain stages right. um right. you know what's I, I'm, I'm not good enough funnily enough i'm not good enough my i'm not good enough has manifested um far more actually from a business perspective rather than an adoption perspective mm -hmm. I, i've uh, my pain about not being good enough in business has been around at a low level uh, chronic stuff for probably 20, 20 odd years. Mm. Whereas my pain about not being good enough, you know, what's wrong with me? Why did my birth give away? That has only probably been uh, occurred to me for like, 20 seconds but mm. it's been 20 seconds of, of of big pain really big pain but i've got the two things to, to 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 put side by side so i can kind of see the difference and because the pain for me around that has been so short-lived i can see that it, it's not really who i am so um let me go back to self-love and ask you what you think that means from a uh, from an a, a adoptive mom perspective. Um, I don't know if I can relate it only to an adoptive mom's perspective. Um, I mean, being aware as an adoptive mom, being aware that. Um, the the child that I adopted that he probably carries some of that those wounds that I, no matter how much I can give love to him that's always going to be there in him you know this this thought that you know he was in in another woman's body he was in a person's body for nine months and there's a bonding that happens during that time so I think that um you know he'll always have that little bit of pain in there even if he knows he's totally loved now and you know he it he understands the mentality of you don't have to be birthed to be loved but it's still probably in there somewhere subconsciously um but as an adoptive mom self-love i mean self-love not only as an adoptive mom but just in all of life i think we have to or i mean i think as human beings we're always overthinking and saying you know, wow, did I do the right thing here? Was this the right thing to do in, in business and everything? And I think we have to start saying, you know what? I did the best I could. I'm good. It's good. And start, maybe self-love is saying, I'm good enough. You know, this is good enough. I'm fine. And always striving to be your best. Yeah. I think I think that's important. If you know that you're always striving to be your best version of yourself, your best, the best adoptive parent, the best you know, person in life, kindness, all of that, then that maybe that's good enough. Although, you know, if you have an ambitious streak, as I do, you're always striving to do more. But but realizing that that's OK, you know, I don't I don't know if that is answering your question completely as as um, self-love as an adoptive parent. But I think just recognizing that we're all just vulnerable human beings and still being able to love ourselves in spite of it. Yeah. So 
this is this is my kind of like my pet subject so uh for me there's been a big sense of relief Mm -hmm. in being good enough right enough Uh, you know enough or enough and i am enough i have done enough i am enough i don't need to do anything like un- unconditional unconditional love for our child as i've heard it expressed by adoptive and biological mums is mm-hmm. the child doesn't have to do anything right they are right. they are you know they they are they are loved unconditionally so there's no condition in terms of something that they need to do. Yeah, to, that's a beautiful love. kind of love. Sorry? That's a beautiful kind of love. That's, yeah. that's the highest form, it seems, right? Yeah. And a lot of people tell me that's easier for their kids than it is for themselves. Yeah, I think it probably is. We're going to be harder on ourselves than we would be with um yeah yeah absolutely i think that's true so what i mean this is a big question uh you know mm-hmm. your, son's, your son's 24 mm-hmm. uh so what what have you learned about helping your son feel loved in those 24 years that's a big question for you Mm-hmm. That is a big question. I think just letting him know that I, um, he knows that I always have his back, you know, uh, and, and that's his term. You know, he, he said that to me recently. I know you always have my back, which w- w- felt great to hear that. Um, and, you know, being supportive of his journey, like if he does want to meet his adoptive mom or you know his adoptive parents I'm open to letting him go there and helping him find them if that's what he wants um you know not feeling threatened by that at any point you know I know that I remember in the past people would say well what happens if he meets his quote unquote real mom you know how would you feel well it's okay you know I mean at this point especially when we've gone all these 24 years I think it's established that you know, I'm his mom, no matter what, <laughs> you know, um, I, I, you know, and I don't think that will ever change for sure. Um, yeah. So I, I think that I just, you know, at that whole term that kind of drives me crazy as an adoptive parent and as someone that works in the adoption, when people say you're real mom, you're real dad, you know, it's, and the correct term is biological, but still there's a lot of people that will still say that even, you know, people that should know better, but a lot of people will say you're real, you know, well, has he met his real mom? Yeah. You know, or, yeah. it's, it's funny, isn't it? Cause we've, we, we talked about overthinking earlier on, or we both talked about overthinking mm-hmm. and, 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 and then, so we're already overthinking enough, right? And, and then yeah. people ask us these questions. Like you, you've obviously been asked ask this question, what happens yeah. if? Yeah. And so it's not, you know, like we've got our, enough of our own overthinking. We don't need a, a, any external, you know, <laughs> well-meaning friends, uh, relatives, right. you know, uh, right. colleagues, whatever it is, you know, to ask us these what if questions because they're mm-hmm. stirring up another load of overthinking. <laughs> And if uh, so funny, um, at the um, the the kind of uh, I, I heard an interesting story this morning on a uh, on a podcast, and it was interesting because it wasn't on a it, it wasn't on an adoption podcast. It was another podcast that I was mm-hmm. listening to, mm-hmm. and the the uh, as an adoptive uh, woman in her twenties. Mm-hmm. And she'd had this, she'd had some tricky stuff going on in her life. And one of the tricky stuff, stuff that was going on, was her 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 mum had instead of, um, yeah, 
And then, and instead of leaving the search and reunion stuff mm -hmm. to, to a daughter who was in her twenties, she mm -hmm. kind of forced it along. The adopted oh. mom, had, and I think that's so funny because usually it's the other way around, right? People say, "Well, they, you know, that's what uh, adopted parents are. They're protective. They don't do this, and and they, you know, they inhibit the search, and they should, they should let they go." And it's interesting this one. This was one went the other way, and and um, and and when this uh, this this girl in her twenties, so she went along, right, to to please her adopted mum. She went wow. on to find the bio, bio. Uh, and 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 it was really. It, it wasn't great, uh, mm. and, and 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 so she connected with uh, a, a woman that had clearly struggled after 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 the yes. uh, after the uh, adoption and was in a was in a not in a great place twenty mm. years whatever twenty twenty odd years late after them. and and the, the 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 so the the adopted daughter was struggled because her bio mm. Biological, a biological mum was struggling, and it was all kicked off. Like, and I thought, isn't that interesting? How um, for it to flip the other way around, um, and you know the unintended con consequences. Because we're all coming from the best place, aren't we? Like, Hopefully, even people yeah. asking us silly questions, like what happens if you know they're, yeah. you know, like, they're, they're coming from that right, the, the right place. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. And and if we say something, well, I don't know. Well, what what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> and then, um, but um, I, I found that fascinating, um, and I, I think you know we the, the 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 moral to me would be to be to let our you know empowering our adopted kids is is about being alongside them. Yeah, not supporting, supporting, yeah. not pushing. I think it's always you know you don't want to. And I've learned as as a parent over the year, I mean, I've changed my parenting ways. I mean, obviously, as your child grows older, you're going to be changing how you interact with them. Um, but, you know, when they're young, you're being very cautious. You know, you don't cross the street. You don't do this. You don't do that. You know, you don't eat that because it's not good for you. And, you know, as they grow older and they've learned, hopefully learned these these life skills you have to just be alongside and support you can't no longer say to a 20 year old you have to do this you know it's it's really uh you just go along and support like i would never say to my son oh you have to meet your biological mother no it's it's up to him you know if he wants to i'll support that you know if i if he wants me to support it yeah. Again, he's in a, he's a young adult now, so it's a little different than when he was an adolescent, obviously. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think in the term of back to what, what I do with youth in foster care, it's an additional challenge because they've been, a lot of these kids have been back and forth to their biological parents. They even visit their biological parents. And I think support is needed so much in, especially in those instances, because, you know, the, these children are sometimes dealing with visiting biological parents that have certain issues and, um, you know, that, that requires additional support from their adoptive parents, not, not to neg it out and say, oh no, don't go, so you're a terrible person, but because whatever, you know, even if a, a child comes from someone who is quote unquote, has significant challenges, they still want to be able to love or think that's my, that's my mom. I still want to love that person. Does that make sense? You know, um, I think support is a good word, you know, just being supportive. And the story you were telling, it doesn't sound like that was being supportive. It was more being just pushy, right? Like pushing what they felt was right onto the person yeah indeed and you know there's um there's the i mean the alongside thing is mm -hmm. it you know like it, it it sounds like you know you're as as you as your child as your son's got older mm -hmm. you've moved from leading so being in front of him you're more kind of alongside him what mm -hmm. this other lady was doing, this other adoptive woman was doing, was 
more like behind, right. behind her daughter, pushing her in a direction that she didn't want to go. So I think for me, I, you know, I've heard that phrase alongside, mm -hmm. along, a, a, but I, I've, I've heard it so many times, but the clarity with which I get that has been enhanced a bit because it, it is alongside, it's coming along, it's being, it, it, with you since 24, you know, you are alongside him. Right. Not, right. not, uh, not, uh, not uh, ahead of him most of the time. I'm sure there are on some occasions and, and maybe sometimes you, uh, there are things where you do get behind him and just give him a gentle nudge along. But, uh, and offer advice and hopefully it's taken if it's, if it's good advice. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, that's a that's, funny that's one. That's a good. That's a good. You know, when you think about it, alongside, I mean, that's kind of a good way to do any relationship in your life as much as possible. Even when you're from down to, uh, you know, your partner or even people you work with. You know, like I try. I thought about this the other day when I was working with some people that, you know, um, treating them as an equal, and yet gently guiding them towards things they need to do um you know it's all about giving up some control in that aspect and that's working on being the higher version to do that you know it took me many years to get there because i was always very much a type a who was you know like got to do this got to do that and i i think i finally have mellowed some to understand that um, and i think that goes in every aspect of your life as well as being a a parent, an adoptive parent, you know, a business person, right? Yeah. Um, working alongside as much as possible and guiding, not demanding or controlling. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Yeah, um, because we can be seen to be, uh, you know, type A uh, behavior. Not many people talk about that these days, do they? I don't know why it's kind of gone out of fashion. The psychologists have to come up with some new thing to talk about, don't they? The the especially people selling to, well, you know, to big organisations, corporations, um, they have to come up with a new thing, so that the 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 CEOs and the the people working for the companies can't, can't say we're already doing that. They have to come up, mm -hmm. come up with a new name. But yeah, there's, there's that fine line, isn't it? The, 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 the type A and the type A uh, are, the, are the leaders and the drivers, and then that and does that for the people who are perhaps used to a slower pace get upset about people moving too fast for them, you know? And and that's the that's the fine line, isn't it, between the speed, gentle, you know, gentle encouragement, and and. I'm thinking like sergeant major military kind of stuff at the right, other end of it. Right. And I think, you know, that that it yeah, you, yes, exactly. I think we just have to be aware of that. I mean, you know, and work on that every day. You have to keep working on it, you know, like anything. Yeah. Um so you're fine-tuning after uh, over the years, you have fine-tuned and your approach and continue to do so. Mm -hmm, I hope so. <laughs> yeah always working on that as um as a parent as as running an organization or anything like that you know just trying to and empower people I think it's really important to try to empower as much as possible especially if you're an adoptive parent too to make sure you're empowering your children I mean when you think about it even biological you know we're, we keep saying adoptive parent and by but the reality is any child needs to be empowered and guided gently by their parents, whether they're adopted or biological, right? Okay. Um, and many, meant it doesn't happen to many of us, you know? I mean, I always, you know, like my parents didn't necessarily guide gently. Um, and I never realized that until I was much older, you know? Yeah. Um, but they did the best they could, they did the best they knew how to do, yeah. yeah. What, what does empowering mean to you and what does that look like with you and your son? Um, understanding what his, his skill set is, which may be different than mine, but encouraging that and, and 
you know, he really is good at what he does, but it's very different than what I do. We have different, different mindsets completely. Um, but in understanding that and, and, you know, making him acknowledging that, hey, you're doing a good job. To, to me that, you know, that I guess that would be empowering. Like, hey, you, you're doing a good job and I'm proud of you. Yeah. Did a lot of work, used to do a lot of work in elementary schools before I came to this adoption space. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I would, I, I would ask th three questions really. Um, and then, and, and we'd play some games. So mm -hmm. it was a mixture of, uh, yeah, it was a mixture of, so I took some adult themes, coaching kind of approaches. Right. Uh, and, uh, and then played some games so that this was for, for, for eight, 11, 10, 11 year old. Children. Right. So the, the three questions that I always asked was, um, what's your dream? What did you dream? What, what's your dream? What's your, oh, dream? your dream? So, you know, my okay. dream is to be yeah. an astronaut, a right. vlogger, a, you know, a professional gamer, and mm -hmm. usually here in the UK, a uh, professional soccer star. And, and that's mm -hmm. for, that's for, uh, for all of them these days, right? Professional sports on the UK's, women, women's professional sports in traditionally, in traditionally male sports like, like football and um, like, sorry, like soccer and, and rugby mm -hmm. is, is on the up and now televised and, and um, they have, so they're, they're making a big effort to make that di more diverse. So what the, so my questions would be, what, what's your dream? Mm -hmm. um, what do you need to make? What, what do you need to, what do you need to do to make your dream come true? And who do you need to be? Mm. Who do you need to be? How do you need to think? How do you need to feel to do what you want to do mm. to make your dream come true? Mm -hmm. And the kids used to absolutely love that because most of the time, well, no, all of the time, the school, you know, is working to a curriculum and it's got absolutely nothing to do do with what the kids the kids might you know so the kids might be interested in it so you know you there'd be sometimes there'd be a, a, a boy or a girl in the class who wanted to be an author mm -hmm. uh, and therefore you know they would see the relevance of and they would enjoy reading books and they would see the relevance of that but they by they they were in, by the far the minority there'd be one in one in every 30 kids right right so most of the most of the time, most of the classes had nothing to do, zero, to do with what was important to them. Right, it was just curriculum that they had. It's to just get curriculum. Through. Yeah, and yeah. you know, and, and sometimes those dreams were kind of closer at hand. So you know, to they 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 want to break into the school soccer team, or mm -hmm. you know what you call little right. league. You know, the, so. Coming alongside uh, a child, I think is 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 kind of meeting them where they're at, uh, and that's great. And obviously, it has it. it that, that's of its place. And I think there's also there's there's that scape for you know when you're talking about encouraging them, it's about meeting them where they're where they want to be, right? Yeah. So yeah. meet them in the future, in like the. Uh, in, in the, uh, it, sorry, it's like a coaching space. And that's, I, I, I talk about this a, a fair bit, really. I, I have been coached a lot, right? And coaches always got, always get you, get me focusing on the, on the, on the past. That's the empowerment piece. Hmm. What, when I tried a bit of therapy, which what wasn't great, it did lead me to restart my search for my birth mother, which was a good thing. Um, uh, but the therapists always want to look back, and right. I'm not really right. a fan of looking back. Like I remember, like in business, you know, the accountant used to the accountant used to come to the meetings and say, "Da da 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 da," and I said, "Well, that's all well and good, Chris, but we actually now to we need to look through the windscreen 
do you, what do you call it? The windshield. Do you call it the windshield in the windshield? Yeah. The windshield yeah. in the States. Win, mm. The windshield, we only need to look forward, right? Not not in the rear view mirror. We don't need to look back anymore. It's it's, it's we, you know, what do people say? The the past is a place of reference, not yeah, I agree. residence. Yeah. Yeah, there's a saying, um, I don't know if it's Buddhist. I mean, I don't necessarily follow that, but it was like, you really can't do anything about your past. Um, you know, the future is unknown. And so you need to stay in the present. That's not to say you're not in the present looking forward to do things. But yeah, the past is the past. and uh, But it shapes us. You know, the past has shaped us, which is... Well. Uh, and yeah. understanding, perhaps just understanding how it shaped us and then, you know, working through that if needed. You know what I mean? Like if you if yeah. you like I mean it shapes up it shapes yeah. our personality. Um but, shapes our yeah. personality, our way of looking at the world. I mean, and I keep going back to um youth and foster care. I mean, I adopted my son when he was just a little itty baby. He was only three days old. So he didn't have other than the connection in his biological mom's, you know, body. He didn't have any of the, uh, you know, early childhood uh, growth with her. Whereas these youth in foster care do, you know, they're living with their biological parents and sometimes not taken away until they're eight or nine. So um, yeah, they, they, they need to cope with their past and, and work through it at that point. And then move on. But then the past is the past to be able to let that go. Right. Sometimes it's harder, I think, for people. And yeah, for in the sure. case of youth in foster care, if they've been damaged, you know, it makes it more difficult. Yeah. So the damage thing. Um, yeah. My so I was I was five weeks old when I was adopted. So a little ah. bit. Yeah. A little bit older than mm -hmm. uh, than yes than uh, your son um so i'd been in a lot older <laughs> yeah yeah well three three times yeah it's yeah it's, it, it, in those numbers it's what what is it uh 10 10 times 10 20 times 20 times yeah so 55 you have distinct memories of your of your biological family then uh, and no, sorry, I said five. Uh, did I say five weeks? I said five weeks. I didn't say you five. Said five years. I thought you said five years, but oh, maybe no, I. No, it's five weeks. Five weeks. Old. Oh, okay, five, five weeks. weeks. Gotcha. Five. Okay. Um, but five weeks is fifty-five days. Fifty-five days mm -hmm. is a lot, a lot more than three days. Essentially, absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah, it's I, still I bonding. <laughs> in those sort of things. Um, and I've been into uh, short-term foster care before that 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 happened um what i always come back to when i think about this is the lady that in inspired me uh going back 15 years ago who was actually she wasn't adopted but she was and it almost happened she almost went into foster care and then adoption because she was abused sexually abused by her dad right? mm. and she came through that um mm with some tough stuff so she was bulimic in her 20s and you know oh, yeah. and some all sorts of stuff there but she she came through that and now she's inspiring others so she she's like my go-to uh, mm -hmm. regular listeners when they hear me saying that because i know that my 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 life has been a cakewalk so people can say well it's all right for you simon you can't you know you're saying you've got all this positive stuff and you're saying all this stuff and you know but what Right. Well, I, I say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, my life has been a cakewalk, and I know, um, uh, 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 I, and I know a, a, a lady called Liz who inspired me, who went through the most unimaginable um, trauma that yeah. anybody can can go through, and she came out of it the other side. So she's my kind of well, if she can do it, anybody can do it if, if, through that. And, and 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 there is the hope, there is the hope, and there is the inspirational uh, piece. There is the inspirational. There is the empowerment piece. And I I did a podcast last week, um, and and an adopted mum who's adopted kids from both as kids as, as infants and also from foster. Care. She mm -hmm. was saying that um, 
the story isn't over, right? The, the, the story isn't over. There is, there is always, there's always hope, whatever people have been through. Um, mm. The story isn't finished. And, yeah, that's a and, great way to look at it. Yeah. And despite a lot of people, you know, we have a tendency, perhaps another human tendency to, to write people off. Um, right. and it's true that's, that's and people can change people can change you know I have a little rescue dog that you know when we she it's amazing in three years how she's she never knew how to actually love because I guess she was abused and she's starting to get there you know and it's been a long process but you know with love with attention she knows we're not going to hurt her and she's she's slowly getting there she doesn't know how to play with toys, you know, and all the stuff that doggies usually do. But she, because I, I don't, you know, she was so matted when we found her that we didn't even know if it was a, a male or a female because <laughs> she was yeah. all, but she is, you can see in the three years we've had her now going on three years, how she's starting to come around. So yeah, not writing, not writing people, not writing anything off and just working and supporting and yeah, working alongside again, right? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, um, I, we've we've got two dogs now, mm -hmm. and, and we had another dog who died, unfortunately, um, going back mm -hmm. twelve years or so ago. And uh, uh, when the dogs are settling in, I, I think you know, I sometimes think of myself, right, settling in, to yeah, a new, to a new home, and 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 being upset, you know, like and 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 then crying, and I think about I think about myself on that. Uh, and I, and I, I can, you know, I, I can feel it. I can, I can feel what's going on for the dog to a certain extent. Um, on the flip side of that, I saw something yesterday, uh, you know, I, I dip in and out of uh, adoptive Facebook groups. I very rarely post anything these days because, mm -hmm. um, uh, because I don't know, it, I, they're just not, they're not inspiring or hopeful places to, for, for me to be. But mm -hmm. I'm checking in. I'm checking in. I'm seeing what's going on, what and 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 how. You know, I've been lucky, right? So a lot of people they haven't been lucky, and that's manifesting right. in, in a certain way. So I have the. If I was them, I'd probably be thinking, and well, no. If I was them, if I if I'd been through what they've been through. Likely, I, I would be thinking and believing like they did. So, um, it definitely makes more challenges. It makes right? more challenges. Um, yeah. But I saw some of them yesterday pointing. Somebody asked a question. You know, they were making this uh, drawing the parallel that we've been drawing between kids and and pets, and 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 they were somebody put a poll on there you know is this acceptable and and i just thought what's the point what what's the point of polling people on 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 their opinion on whether they were talking about you know should something like should should be you know should should the word what's your opinion on the word pet adoption you know should it be should there be something else and i just thought what is the point? What, I mean, <laughs> what how, how, to what extent? How is that going to move it them It on? goes back to overthinking again. You yeah. know, people overthinking. I, yeah. I agree. I mean, we've had, yeah, I mean, we have children on our website. Like we have a website, um, heartgallerynyc.org and heartgallerynewyork.org, which is statewide and features children on the website that need to find adoptive homes or their youth in foster care. And hopefully the caseworker doesn't hear this, but one of the caseworkers um, in New York State was opposed to what we put on the photos when a child was visiting with an adoptive family, which was on hold. We put on hold. And the caseworker said they didn't like that term because it seemed like a pet adoption or it just seemed, it didn't seem, and we were, I mean, we took it down to make them happy um, because we understood their point of view. But again, it was like overthinking back what yeah. you were saying. I mean, what does it matter if we say on hold or 
in the process of adoption. You don't know when a child from foster care is visiting with a family, if it's going to go through the adoption or not, they have a, like a, a trial time when they visit and all of that. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. overthinking those details. Yeah. I was thinking about, I used to have a business coach and she would pull me up on the smaller details. And I just think, just forget it. Do you know, like, <laughs> oh, you know, don't, stop. Yeah. Can we focus on what I'm going to do? Not whether I use the right terminology for something. And it's just like, it, it it's nitpicking and it slows us down you know um i i i remember i, I took a guy who was a speaker to see mm -hmm. a guy who is one of the best speakers that i've ever heard so he's um he's a he's actually the um partner in life and in, and in work of the lady that i was talking about so my, okay. my mentor right so uh -huh. uh, she, she's she's they work together um and he is an amazingly entertaining humorous uh uh humorous guy who lays his story bare um uh, and um so he had everything and then he lost everything and he he almost committed suicide and then, and, and, and he's got everybody, he's, he's got everybody in the arm, you know, in, in, in right where they want them. And, and then he says, so I, you know, and I, I commit to, I, I lost my, I lost my house, which was this mansion. And, and I lost it, my wife and my kids, my business, mm. everything. Went. And I thought about, you know, almost commit suicide. And then he says, and for those, for those of you, uh, who've, uh, for those of you who are wondering, I, I didn't, I wasn't successful in it. And, and then there's the relief, you know, everybody laughs. So this guy's a, a great raconteur and he goes around to talk about how he now inspires other people. Um, and um, and I, I he, he's, he's so far off what most of my friends would be interested in, I wouldn't have taken, but I took this one guy to, to, see, him, to see him. And um, mm -hmm. I said, so what did you make of that? We'd had a, like a whole day doing stuff with this, and he said, "Oh, um, he kept on standing in front of the uh, the screen, um, so I couldn't. So, it, so his body, the shadow, his shadow, and his body was obscuring the screen. And I just thought, you've got no i, you've got no idea, mate. You know, you, you've you, you've listened to this incredibly powerful guy. He's a hunter. He's had 150 people hanging on his every word. They've been crying. They've been laughing." They've learned loads, and all this guy could do was point out the fact that he stood in front of the screen, and oh, and, and I just think yeah. you know, like overthinking, getting stuck in the detail. It it we don't it it, it ain't it ain't great. We we should be working towards something bigger than that, shouldn't we? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal, isn't it? And I think that's where, you know, not to get off totally off topic here, but when you think about it, just being in the moment and trying to not overthink, that's where people start proposing meditation because it's bringing you down to just the basics, right? Not that I meditate every day, I should. Um, but it is... Uh, yeah, I, and I think it, when we boil, you know, we go back around to adoption too, it is overthinking. I mean, I remember I overthought before I adopted my son. I talked to other adoptive parents. I I had a lot of questions. And one of the questions was, would I feel like I loved him or her? Because I didn't know then, even though, you know, it wasn't coming out of my body, even though I wasn't birthing the child. And I remember some very intelligent people speaking with that that told me their feelings and that they had the same questions and that it, in the end, it really was the last thing that that they had to worry about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Beautiful. Uh, I, I, I saw in my adoption file, um, I saw a letter that my mum wrote my adopted mum, my mum mm -hmm. uh, wrote wrote to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the agency uh, a week or so after. Um, they 
they adopted me, they took me home. And and they said, no, no, it was a couple of days actually, actually um, and said, yeah, we love him. Mm-hmm. Aww. Yeah. And, yeah. And I could tell that made you feel really good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. so um, you've mentioned the websites. Uh, so listeners, if you want to check out uh, if you want to check out what uh, Laurie's doing um, with the Heart Gallery, then please look at the, uh, you know, there's links in the show notes, links to the website, link to the socials. Um, and if you like what they're doing, please, please share it because the latest figures I heard, sorry, I'm going to cough. <laughs> the latest figures I heard uh, in the in the states as a whole, in the United States as a whole, um, there's a hundred thousand kids yeah. uh, whose parental rights have been terminated. I think is that is that yeah. Right? There's over a hundred thousand that that are available for adoption. So, um, so the more you, dear listener, can help Laurie and organisations like Laurie's, the Heart Galleries across the states by sharing what they're doing uh, then the 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 faster we're going to be able to get that thank you for saying that simon and and also you know it's not adoption is our primary goal primary mission but there's other ways that people can help too if they're not ready to adopt a child you know you can foster you can mentor i mean mentoring is really important it's all about standing alongside helping we've done some projects where we've done job giving the the youth opportunities for job and life skills and that is really a sweet spot for me and something i want to do more of where uh, because there are going to be youth that don't get adopted and how can we help them along the way if they don't find a person in their life to be their parent so by job and life skills so they can move on to have a healthy life healthier life yeah fantastic stuff yeah my mum and dad adopted uh, sorry my mum and dad fostered before mm, nice they, and then they they went on the list uh, for approval for for being um uh for being a, a adopt adopted parents and then they they took themselves off the fostering list in case you know somebody came along and they obviously didn't want to have to um uh they, they didn't want to have to send a, 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 a send a foster kid back you know I, I, right. I, so I'm, uh, I'm not uh, using the right words there guys but I uh, and girls I hope that that's um, <laughs> I'm sorry for my slip there um but that's you know that so that's what they that's what they did and uh, then then me and then I'm I must have done okay must have been okay because they adopted a little girl as well so I'm not sister oh so. I'm sure <laughs> um so is there anything that else you'd like to share, Laurie? Um, no, I think it, we've. This has been a great time to talk to you. And again, it's just about. There's so many causes in this in this world to worthy causes, you know, um, and this is. I I think that you know the adoption or fostering or mentoring of children is a pretty basic one because it's all about love. And if anybody has, there's so many, there's a lot of people that are alone in life and they don't need to be. There's there's youth out there that could use their support. Yeah. So just want to share that. Yeah, if we can all just help a little bit in whatever way, maybe somebody has a, a job that they could use interns and maybe, you know, there's, there's so please reach out and... Uh, and it's been lovely speaking with you. Thank you so much for doing this podcast and inviting me on and doing your good work to help. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you. Thanks, Laurie. And thank you, listeners. We will speak to you again very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.